the Stuart 7A model steam plant, part 7, making the reversing lever. In the chuck at the moment is a piece of stainless steel, and I need to turn this down to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter and drill a hole in the centre of it. I'm currently setting the micrometer to read 5 sixteenths of an inch. There are two ways to do this, you can turn the dials and read off the numbers on the side of the micrometer, or alternatively just set the micrometer to the diameter of a 5 sixteenths of an inch twist drill. To be honest, I normally do it this way because I find that it's quicker. This is a really nice piece of free cutting stainless steel if there is such a thing. Really I should use lubricant with it, but for the purposes of the video I'm cutting it dry. The small carbide tip tool is fitted with a new tip and it's cutting very freely. At this point some viewers may be thinking, which part of the reversing lever is this? And the answer is, it's not part of the reversing lever. Welcome to turning pieces of random stainless steel for beginners. In the days of files, back in the old dark days of filing, you would use something called a filing button. And this was a piece of hardened steel which you could fasten to the piece of work you were filing and then file all the way up to it because with it being a hardened piece of steel the file didn't affect it. And purely coincidentally I've just used a file to clean up the sharp edge. Quick check with the micrometer, yes I'm nearly there. I use the file to clean up the sharp edge because any 90 degree cut is razor sharp. And as you've just seen I was able to easily file the edge of the piece of stainless steel. If this was a hardened filing button that wouldn't have worked. The point is I'm not going to use a file to shape the reversing lever, I'm going to use a belt sander. So that's why I'm just using a random piece of stainless steel. I've just about got it to the right size now I think, yes there you go, 5 sixteenths of an inch. The next part of the job is to drill the hole in the centre, starting with a centre drill like this and finishing off with a number 40 twist drill, which is a nice tight clearance size for a 7BA bolt. What am I going to do with this part when I've finished it? I'm going to bolt it to the reversing lever and use it as a guide when I grind the reversing lever to shape on my 1 inch belt sander. Before that though it needs to be parted off, you will notice that for the parting off process I have used some oil. When machining stainless steel, it's a good idea, where possible, to use a carbide tip tool. This, however, the parting tool, is just a plain old high speed steel one. When machining or drilling stainless steel, it can be a big problem. You have to keep the tool going, keep it cutting. Because if you don't and the tool rubs the work, the stainless steel surface immediately work hardens and then you cannot cut it. It just blunts the tool or destroys the tip of a twist drill. This clip shows me marking out the shape of the reversing lever, well the approximate shape anyway. Now it's time to bolt the piece of stainless steel that you've just seen me make to the reversing lever blank as shown. I've used a 7BA stud for this. The next part of the process is critical and if I do it wrong the part will be no good and I'll have to throw it away and start again. And I don't want to do that so I'm going to be really careful not to take too much metal off the reversing lever blank particularly from around the piece of stainless steel. On screen at the moment is work in progress. I'm removing the brass very, very carefully up to the scribed line on the reversing lever blank. You will notice that I keep removing the blank and that's to dip it in a pot of water to cool it down. I have to do this because it's getting too hot to handle. At this point I like to say I don't think I've ever had a girlfriend like that and time's running out at my age to get one. I really must keep my mind on the job, because if I make a mistake here, then I have to just start again, and that would be a real pain. But I'm not going to make a mistake, I'm being very, very careful, nice and gentle, only remove a small amount, and now I'm being extremely careful around the curve part. I have a bit of a guide, but don't forget, the belt sander will also remove the stainless steel. Now I've got somewhere near the shape that I want, it's time to use the polishing spindle, to initially clean up the part and see roughly what it's going to look like. And in exactly the same way as when I was grinding this part, I paused periodically to dip the part in a tub of water just to cool it. This section of the video is speeded up. I'm sure some viewers are thinking, well why doesn't he wear gloves? Well I think gloves are dangerous. Gloves can easily catch up in moving machinery and you wouldn't know how bad the injury was until you took the gloves off and your fingers fell on the floor. That's enough of health and safety in this episode. All I need to do now is finish this part on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. 
The piece of sandpaper is overhanging the bench and I've folded one edge of it down. And that way it makes it much easier to sand the part up to the edge, like the bus that I silver soldered onto the end of it. This job can be very tedious, very boring and takes a long time, but it's worth doing it because you need the reversing lever to look like a casting, and at the moment it looks like a roughly machined piece of brass, but keep watching you'll see what happens. Once again folding the sandpaper over the edge of the bench helps me to make the curved part the correct shape. It takes a while though. As always this video is heavily edited. This job took about, I would say, 25 minutes to complete. And I'm talking about just the sanding of the part on the wet or dry sandpaper, not making the rest of it. Here I'm checking the dimensions before I move on to the next part of the job. What I have to do now is very, very carefully drill a small hole in the end of the reversing lever. This centre drill is far too big, but it makes the required indentation on the top of the lever. Now I'm drilling a hole down into the lever using a 1 16th of an inch diameter twist drill. Back to the lathe and it's a simple plain turning job to make the handle for the top of the lever. I'm using a parting tool for this because it always cuts square and as this handle needs to taper I'm rotating both of the hand wheels at the right amount to move the tool away from the work as it progresses down the work. I find this really easy for two reasons. One is I'm a keyboard player so I've got quite good manual dexterity and the other reason was my childhood obsession with a toy called an Etch-a-Sketch. You turn two knobs and you got a picture on the screen. Very simple but very clever. The end of the handle is now 1 16th of an inch in diameter and it fits in the hole in the reversing lever perfectly. When I tried the handle in place though it still looked a bit bulbous so here I'm removing some more metal from it. Also I've pulled the piece of bar further out from the chuck. That way I can use my carbide tipped knife tool to part off the piece of brass. This leaves a sharp pointy end that are then shaped like this. Here's the finished handle. All I need to do now is silver solder the handle onto the main reversing lever. And just for once I'm not using too much silver solder. After the part was allowed to cool to black and quenched in some water, here I'm cleaning it up on the polishing spindle. At this stage I'm being really careful not to apply too much pressure on the polishing spindle because I don't want to round off every one of the edges. Then it's back onto the wet or dry sandpaper followed by a bit more polishing spindle and then the final polishing will be done with this stuff. This is Brasso wadding but unfortunately this is quite dry Brasso wadding. I need to buy some more. But it still does the trick and after a while the reversing lever looks like this. So why didn't I use a casting? It would have been easier and probably quicker to use a casting, but I didn't have one, and it was a case of, I know, I'll fabricate it. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.